This game is so charming. I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. And and thanks so much to the uh, the developers that are hanging out in chat and answering questions. Um, you made a you made a cool thing. I'm, I'm excited to solve the mystery. So. Um, uh, yeah, speaking of which, I've got some, some keys for the game. So what we're going to do is, uh, before the next break, like right before we go to our next break, so around 12, around noon my time, I'll take a slightly longer break than usual. Uh, everybody can enter the raffle, and then uh, I will, uh, I'll do a drawing for, um, for some keys for the game, so you can have your own cyberpunk adventure. Um, but for the meantime, thanks for being here, thanks for sticking around, and uh, let's... Um, Let's talk to uh, to Tomcat, shall we? A woman stands at a drink table, quietly people watching. I mean, I'm assuming this is Tomcat because she's got cat ears and she's the only other person to talk to, but... Wait, there's more bar! Megaphobator! An arcade cabinet! Megaphobator! Only the most ghost shooting his ghoul blasting his funny will have this side of the bay. Yeah, gimme. Aww. Womp womp. Phobator. The arcade version of Charge Shot, a jetpack bounty hunter deathmatch game. It's also busted. The Stardust should take better care of their machines. Yeah, damn right. Alright, alright. How about this one? Indie Kart. Super Indie Kart, so the most fun and dynamic kart racing games again. Uh, I bet it's broken. Car currently out of order. Oh, a stanchion. Apparently, sitting, sitting isolated far away from the dance floor in video games makes you important, somehow. <sighs> Alright. Her ears are definitely those of someone who's undergone gene therapy. She's a hybrid. Yes? What do you want? Hello! I'm looking for a person named Tomcat. Oh. Oh no. Oh god, I'm a bad person. You tricked me, game! You tricked me! What the hell? So you head right up to the chick with the ears, because of course she'd have the cat name? I get it. Unfreaking believable. I I'm sorry, you're just the only person standing here. <sighs> nice save, jerk. Listen, I'm cruising for cuties and I don't appreciate you blocking the view, but I'm a cutie, I'm sorry. I don't know where Tomcat is, so shove off. Okay. Let them know I'm looking for them if you see them. Yeah, alright, whatever. Just get moving. Oh. oh I'm the worst! <laughs> Faux pas! I asked everybody else first. <laughs> whatever. I like when people are mean to me. Uh, shut up, Tomcat. I want to go talk to this NPC some more. Hey there! Heard you were looking for me? What can I do for you? Are you Tomcat? Ha, one and only! Though I'd prefer it if you keep it a little quieter than you have been. I do my share of moseying on both sides of the law, if you know what I mean. Sh sure. To what do I owe- I wonder- I gotta- It's always hard figuring out a voice for the character. Their voice, like... Change, like the voice for them changes as, as I figure out like where they're from like I'm gonna do like Majid is different now because I know he's from Pakistan So pardon me if I just like use my regular voice at first I try, try it out live To what do I owe the pleasure of our meeting here? Uh, a friend of mine Hayden has gone missing. We found a note saying he was gonna meet you. Oh Hayden's missing. Well, that's sour news indeed. I s this sounds a little southern like I see you got his little ROM with you So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now you know about me? And my creation? Hayden never mentioned your involvement to me. Oh, sure thing, hun. I helped reprogram the back end on your OS so the AI code Hayden wrote for you would interface properly with the network. I have a distressing lack of information on my own creation. Incept dates. Hayden never saw fit to inform me on what went into designing my programming. Is there anything else you can tell me? Oh, not much more on that end. I, I didn't have much to do with your core AI routine, so I can't really elaborate. Mm. Sorry, dear. Anything else I can help with? Tell us about yourself. Oh, sure. You may have even heard of me in the news. About ten years ago, I hacked into Parallax's main ROM servers. Caused one hell of a stink if I do say so myself. 
People arguing back and forth whether I was a kid genius or a malicious criminal. Oh my god, it's acid burn. No wait, uh... Cool. What was what was the main character's like original hacker name in Hackers? Um, Crash Override? I, no, that's his new one. Anyway, something cool. Zero cool. <laughs> They're zero cool. Earned myself an enforced net blackout for a few years, but I think it was worth it for the prestige. So, which was it, Kid Genius or Malicious Criminal? <laughs> I didn't really do it to steal anything, but I had to break an awful lot of eggs to crack my way in. I chalk it up to the exuberance of youth. Now I try to stay on the straight and narrow. Well, mostly. Sometimes. What's the deal with the accent? Are you from the South? <laughs> no, dear. I'm California, born and raised. I read a lot of books during my mandated blackout and just happen to get into novels about down South. I like to imagine myself as a Southern Belle. Or maybe I just like having three walk-in closets full of clothes. Why hack into Parallax? I guess I did it to see if I could. I mean, Parallax is a mighty big target. Bigger than the government in many ways. With as many ROMs as they have on the market, they need some of the toughest, toughest darn security in the world. How did you know Hayden? Hayden and I met not long after my blackout ran out, when he tapped me for my expertise in cracking the lips OS. It puzzled me at the time, since he's very sharp himself. I think he just... Wanted someone working on it off the books. He ain't the most straightforward man. What was Hayden working on? Oh, mostly on that little guy you got there. See, there's another... I mean... What's your gender, you little robot? No, oh, I'm so confused. Whatever, as long as other people are gendering the robot as a he. Mostly that little guy you got there. I'm sure he had his fingers in a lot of pie, but Turing's all I know about. My computer runs LipsOS. I didn't know ROMs did, too. The live intelligent processing system is the primary operating system old Parallax computers used to run on, but the company has since expanded it to make it especially useful for their ROMs. It's real heavy on learning algorithms, so it can tailor itself to each user's habits, and it functions through using a distributed mesh network for non-essential public files. Can you explain that to me like I'm five? <laughs> well, that's a fancy way of saying all ROMs connect to other ROMs within range. And they share any files amongst themselves the user hasn't flagged as private. It's handy in dense population areas like NeoSF, since it can bypass regular telecom nodes to access the internet. Out in the sticks, though, you are stuck connected to regular old pipes. Yuck. Y you know why he may have gone missing? Oh, I'm not real sure. He was super hush-hush about his work on touring, and that may have made Parallax upset. They're working on their own projects. I'm certain Hayden had some kind of intellectual property clause written into his contract with them. That would just mean he'd get fired, maybe even sued, but I can't imagine they'd disappear him. They ain't the CIA or anything. Okay, so how do we find Hayden? I'm not really sure, hun, but I guess it might help if we knew why he went missing in the first place. I'll stay here and ask around a bit. People know me. They sure ain't gonna talk to a newbie like yourself. Why don't you hop back over to Hayden's place and grab the data cache out of his computer for me? We can go over his research notes and see if we can't find a reason for his being vanished. Alright, I'll come back when I have the data cache. Good luck, Turing. You keep him out of trouble. So you'll notice, um, I, I like, either consciously or subconsciously, I avoided asking why the, the woman with the ears I was mad at me because as a player I, I know why I totally like misspecied to them like I, I was being speciesist I guess towards them and I feel I feel awkward and guilty about it I want to like apologize more like I'm feeling like this urge to be like oh, God, I gotta make it better like please forget but it's not for them it's for me right like I want to feel better for myself I'm just gonna leave it alone they told me to go away I'm just gonna I'm gonna back away kindly and we're gonna go elsewhere we're gonna leave Oh, you had to leave your drink in the bar. I forgot to drink it. Can I go back in? Yeah, give me more drinks. <laughs> Random glass of whiskey. It's not yours. You don't say. <laughs> Alright. Let's, um... Let's get another drink. Majid. 
let's have a... Where's that Russian one? I want that one. Oh, I went right past it. All right, well, I guess we'll just have a Natasha Allegri. A cup of chocolate milk and two... Ew. 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 Cup of chocolate milk and two shots of Everclear. You got it. Coming right up. Look at Natasha Allegri. Drink it. That hit the spot. You drank your drink. Yatta. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just, I would, I'm, I try to talk to you, but I touched you. So that was pretty good. Can I have another one? Maybe this. Um, give me. Uh, just give me. Um, just give me a spicy gentleman. I would like a spicy gentleman, please. It's two vodkas. Two shirachers, a lemon and a chili, and then I'm gonna drink it. That's pretty fast. You're a good drink maker guy. Gimme. Bottoms up, spicy gentleman. I had to drink it. That's good. But would it be better? Would it be better for more of having a drinks? Where's the one with. What do I want? I want, um... Fucking, I don't know! Just, I, give me a flaming homer! A mint flavored soda with the gin. I'm gonna take it easy on this one. Fucking, I don't, I'm gonna drink it. Drink, fucking, I, I don't know. I'm gonna drink. Keep this up, we gotta find the bathroom. Oh boy. Excuse me, there seems a bit earthquake. Never mind, good night. You passed out drunk and woke up here. I managed to get you home. I pulled a Higgs. I managed to get you back home before you went completely unconscious. I practically had to drag you. Be more responsible. Uh, she did. Don't talk to me, robot. Robot, cure hangover. Execute cure hangover dot bat. Go. Ah, uh, thanks for the hug. I, I don't have a get consent for hug button. Um, okay, what was I supposed to... What do I do? Where? I bet, I'm... Yeah, no, I gotta get back to that bar. Let's go. I think I left my friend there. Yep. Hey, I don't know how long you've been waiting here, but, um... Hello? Hi, bouncer. Yep, no. Let's get... Hey, I mean, while we're here... I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I meant to... Hey, so how's it going? Could I have, I mean, throw me a drink here. <laughs> First, haphazardly apply chocolate syrup to the inside of a glass, then apply one ounce of Irish cream, then carefully layer half an ounce of raspberry liqueur on top. It sounds thick and gross. So I'm gonna drink it. And then we'll get back to the quest, I promise, right after this drink. Okay, all right. Um, I mean, I could, I mean, uh, I mean, one, one more could, one more couldn't hurt, right? Uh, let's have, um, let's, we'll, we'll be classy. We'll polish it off. We'll have Adam's favorite drink. All right. A Sazerac is rye whiskey, absinthe, and bitters. Served neat after being stirred over ice. Uh, the absinthe is technically like a wash on the inside of the glass. You don't just mix them. So you, you wash the glass in absinthe, you put rye into it, and you mix it with like a special, there's a special kind of bitters used to make a Sazerac. It is awesome, and I would like to have one right now. But it's like 11 in the morning, and I don't have bitters. Or absinthe. So I'm just gonna imagine drinking this. All those other drinks, those were for you, chat. This one's for me. Delicious. All right, okay, let's go. Let's go and talk to Tomcat. Tomcat, my friend. Well, hello again, dear. We should get going. 
Oh yeah, I'm supposed to. Oh yeah, never mind. I was supposed to go back to the house. God, I'm so drunk. I. I mean, I guess I'm hungover now. I couldn't. I was supposed to go and. All right, Turing. Let's go back to the house. Where is my apartment? Ah oh, boy, it's a good thing uh, transit is cheap in this universe. All right, Lappy. Oh yeah, you're broken. God, all that drinking got me confused. That's not my computer. It's Hayden's computer. Oh shit. Oh, oh god. I'm sorry, Copbot. Halt, citizen! This area has been cordoned off by the Neo SF Police Department as part of an ongoing investigation. Sorry. I apologize for the inconvenience, but not authorized to allow anyone to enter this location. I love the the eye moving back and forth. A cool little touch. Um, listen, listen, officer. Uh, I, this it's my friend's place. I know I smell like a lot of different kinds of drinks, but I need to get in there. Is everything okay? I'm sorry, citizen. I cannot give comment on any currently ongoing investigations. Okay. All right. Okay, Satsukan. If you would like to leave your contact information with me, I can forward your inquiry to the detective in charge who will get in touch with you as soon as it's feasible. I hope the detective is gruff, hard-boiled, and ruggedly handsome. They may have questions for you. Thank you in advance for your cooperation, citizen. Where's my fuck the police option? That will not be possible, citizen. The area must be preserved in pristine condition for the collection of evidence. Yeah, but I was already in there. Only authorized Neo SFPD personnel may enter. Can I roll circles? I'm required to inform you I am set to level 2 guard mode. And any effort to make unauthorized entry will be met with non-lethal force sufficient to incapacitate. Look, I have been incapacitated once today, and I'm not afraid to do it again. Loitering around an active investigation area is prohibited by city statute, and I am authorized to issue a citation of fine to any person found to be doing so. We should go ahead and get moving. Huh. That was fruitless. I didn't expect the police to get involved so quickly. Typically, they would refuse to open an investigation on a missing person until at least 48 hours had passed. Still, we need to get in there and get that data cache. Do you have any ideas? Ah, I can roll circles. <laughs> I have a contact with the Neo SFPD. Who would that be? I found no such connection when I compiled your personal history. Lexi. She's kind of new to this jurisdiction, but she'll talk to me. Give me a moment, Skinny. Oh. I see now. Detective Lexi Rivers. She used to date your sister. I must have missed that link in your history somehow. You have a very poor net presence, Skinny. Well, I'm sorry. It makes anticipating your needs more difficult. Um... Sorry? It's okay. We'll work on it. Well, setting aside your unreasonable distaste for technology, I agree with your suggestion. Her online profile suggests she might be willing to work with us off the books, so to speak. A considerable boon, since I would prefer to maintain the clandestine nature of this investigation for now. Let us go and find Miss Rivers to request assistance. That would be Detective Rivers, Turing. Oh, right. Should I refresh my protocols for handling titles around Detective Rivers? If you want to keep all your teeth, yeah. I... I don't even have any teeth. Mm. I mean, done and done. We wouldn't want any social faux pas, would we, Skinny? I'm the one making faux pas. Can't be both doing it. Now, lead the way. Oh yeah. Let's go. Ah, oh, the music is so good. Like that faint bit crush in the background, can you hear that? Ah, the sound design is really cool in this game. The Neo San Francisco Police Station for the Richmond District. It has all the charm of, well, any other old police department. I wonder if it's anybody's last day on the force, if they're two weeks from retirement. Crime status screen. 
It's a map showing police activity in Neo San Francisco. The milk would just splatter and drip down the glass screen. Ooh, dense. The station is seen better dense. Seen better dance. Yeah. Seen better days. I'm gonna call this one Harvey. This old looking desk has a ton of paperwork on it. Cops hate paperwork. Alright, let's talk to Copbot. An ED-64 police unit attends the front desk. Welcome to the Richmond District Neo San Francisco Police Station, citizen. Skinny. How may I be of assistance today? I'm looking for Detective Lexi Rivers. Tell her it's Skinny. Please give me a few moments to get in contact with Detective Rivers. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Thank you for your patience. Unfortunately, Detective Rivers is out on assignment at the moment, but she has given me her authorization to send you her way. You can find her by the Carousel Building in Golden Gate Park, but I will caution you to exert care. She's working an investigation right now, and we are not responsible for your safety, should you approach. Is there anything else I can help you with? My friend's apartment is being cordoned off, can you tell me why? I apologize, citizen, but I am not authorized to comment on ongoing investigations. I will pass your concerns on to the detective in charge. Is there anything else I can help you with? Is there anything else you can tell me that's newsworthy? I am not authorized to comment on any ongoing investigations, but the protests outside Genus are a hot human interest topic. Perhaps you could look around there. Feel free to note the assistance of Neo San Francisco Police Department in your article. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, thank you. Have a good day, citizen. All right, let's go. Um, yeah park. <laughs> Look at the little guy. What's he doing? Oh, he's, is that a, he's like running a hose out, I guess? Casually dressed fellow. Sharply dressed woman. Snack stand. Let's look at this water rom. This is a public park rom. It roams its designated area to offer water and directions to tourists. It also takes tips. Are you trying to poison the water supply? Sorry, sorry. I'm, nope, not trying to. Hello, I'm Alfie I83. How may I help you? Would you like some cool, refreshing water? Sure, I'll take some water. Sure thing. Please wait. <laughs> okay, here you go. Yes. Water levels. Okay. Would you care to donate some credits to the ROM Recycling for a Greener Earth Foundation? Yeah, totally. Thank you so much! Earn some karma points. A glass of water. The 2064 Golden Gate Park Holiday Souvenir Glass, refillable at any Alfie refreshment bot, currently holding some cool, refreshing water. Can I use the water on my milk? Just water it down, maybe that'll make it more palatable? Alright, let's uh, take a look at these people. Do you think I'd look nice in that hat, Skinny? <laughs> now the robot wants a hat. You're ridiculous. Wouldn't hurt to try. I'll take you shopping sometime. Mmm. I... I'd really love that, Skinny. Maybe it would look better in orange. Or a green. Perhaps a mauve. <laughs> there better be a chance to put a hat like that on that robot later. Oh, man. Just got this ROM yesterday. It's an Apollo Mark 7 model. Okay. Looks like he's taking a photo of his ROM. <sighs> Having a lot of mixed feelings about this whole wearing a hat on a breezy day thing. A small snack stand in the middle of the park. The coffee there is actually really great. Well, let's order something. Why spend credits on great yet expensive coffee when there's a park ROM giving out free water? Drink this then. That hit the spot. You drank your water. Can I have some more? Yes, I would.
Water levels, okay. Which is more than we can say for California right now. Originally built by the Herschel Spillman Company in 1914, this carousel is still one of the outstanding attractions near the children's playground. Well, let's go ride the carousel. <laughs> I don't think we have time to ride it, even though it looks fun. Fine, we'll come back. Hey, some people. Oh, it's that Froyo guy who got his stand knocked over. A very distraught owner of a very destroyed Froyo stand. A broken, beat-up Froyo stand. You read about it in the newspaper. I sure did. This pump controls the flow of water to the park realm. It's currently on and pumping strong. One of the NSFPD's finest realms on assignment in the park. That's Detective Lexi Rivers. You met her through your sister a while back, but you haven't seen her in quite some time. Until today. This is the Sharon Art Studio, established in 1968. It's Neo-SF's largest public art studio, with classes and workshops for all ages. Alright, Lexi, how you doing? Hey, Skinny. Long time. Give me a few minutes to wrap this up before you start twisting my arm about whatever you need, okay? I swear, you wouldn't believe the amount of paperwork I have to file over a damn wrecked Froyo stand. By the way, how is your sister doing? She's fine. What's with the Froyo stand? I don't know if you've heard, but we got some phantom robot on the loose everyone's calling Wonder Boy. Like the Sega Master System character? Supposed to be a hero of the people or something, but I have no idea what smashing a Froyo stand has to do with it. I think it's just a bunch of kids screwing around at night and committing some light vandalism. But Brass said to take it seriously, so that's what I'm gonna do. Not like I don't have any real cases I could be working on or actual criminals to be hunting down. If I'd known this is all they'd give me, I never would have transferred. Well, what's what's their problem with you? I'm too young for full detective. I'm too big of a hothead. I've got a history. I've got implants. Take your pick. She's a tough young detective with nothing left to lose. She'd get along really well with Duncan Wu. I transferred because the credits were good. I thought being in a bigger city would mean I'd get to work on some bigger cases. Instead, I'm stuck chasing ghosts and dead ends. So yeah, I have plenty of spare time to help you with whatever you got, Skinny. It's gotta be better than dealing with this crap. Hold on one sec, let me finish with this guy. So, fill me in, what's going on? Uh, an old friend of mine, Hayden, has gone missing. Uh, shoot, that's no good, I'm sorry. How long have they been gone? If it's been less than 48 hours, I can't start doing anything officially. I can't even really argue with that rule. They'll probably show up eventually. Maybe they just went on a trip? Unfortunately, detective, things are a bit more serious than that. I am Hayden's personal rom, and I was witness to his kidnapping. Just prior to being taken, my owner instructed me to seek help should anything bad happen. Now I believe he was expecting it. I have enlisted Skinny for their assistance. I can assure you Hayden was taken by force, and time is of the essence. We need your help if we're going to track him down. Oh, shoot. In that case, you should for me, forward me your video of him being abducted, and I'll open up an investigation. I'm not sure I'd be put on the case, conflict of interest and all. <sighs> but I can keep tabs on things for you. I was hoping we could keep things off the book. Yes, Hayden is a senior researcher at Parallax, and I know he's working on some very high-profile projects for the company. It's quite likely he was taken by someone with enough money and influence to ensure an official investigation goes nowhere. You yourself has already cast doubt on your superior's judgment. Furthermore, we know there's some kind of investigation currently ongoing. We were stopped from entering Hayden's apartment by an N NSFPD ROM. You know, you're a bit chattier than most ROMs. I guess it makes sense that Parallax gets the shiniest new toys, huh? Uh, <laughs> I'll see what's going on in the department. I don't know what I can do if someone inside is actually dirty, but I can pass information to you if I decide my superiors aren't taking the investigation seriously. They wouldn't have left only one bot in charge if it was something important. Hopefully it's unrelated. I'll get back to you on it soon. Just relax. We'll figure this out. Promise. Well, could you radio the guard room to let us in? No way, not gonna happen. If there's already an investigation, I'm not just gonna let you waltz in and tamper with evidence. At least give me a day to make sure they're doing their job right. What happened, Lexi? You used to play by your own rules. 
Don't try to pull that guilt shit on me, Skinny. I know you and I have gotten into a few scrapes in the past, but that kind of stuff gets real old after a while. It's why I took this nice stable job in the city. If I'd done it sooner, I'd still be with your sister. You're gonna put his life in danger because you don't want to stir the pot? God damn it. You know that isn't what I meant. You don't even have any proof there's dirty cops in on it. I can't work on assumptions and guesses. You think me feeding info to a journalist of all people isn't bad enough? We'll have a better shot at this if we work it from both ends. All right, fine. I'll get you in the damn department. Just be careful, okay? I know you think I'm just being paranoid, but the city is tense right now. With the protests and everything going on, you might be poking around in a hornet's nest. Get a weapon of some kind if you're gonna poke around and stay safe. I care about you. Thanks, Lexi. I'll be careful. You do that, I'll radio ahead to the bot at the place. Let me know what you find out. All right, I better get out of here. Hey you, Froyo guy, come along to the station. We'll get this report filed. Who, me? But I've gotta attend my stand. Cut the crap. Oh yeah, face on. Cut the crap. I'm not going anywhere in the robot day post. We'll make sure no one messes with the crime scene. Uh, y yes, ma'am. Later, Skinny. I'll be in touch. Yeah, she's a hard ass. Were the reports true? Was this really done by some rogue ROM? You know what this Froyo stand needs? <laughs> Did you know that Froyo is not supposed to be made with spoiled milk? Cause it's not. Ever. Ah, cool. So I can pair the headphones with various like robots and stuff. I'm gonna have to try that more. You deactivate the pump, stopping the water flow. Why did I do that? Hello, I'm Elfie. How may I help you? Uh-oh, no water flow, robo guy. <laughs> Some people see the glass half empty. Some see the glass half full. Alfie sees yours is completely full. Well, that's going to be a thing later, for sure. Hey, Alfie, here. What are you, what are you thinking? You can't sink to this realm with those. Okay. Huh. Right. Well, I'll leave it on for now. We'll have to come back. So, Lexi said I should get a weapon, but I definitely do not have one of those. It's police station, my house, and Hayden's apartment. All right, let's go to Hayden's apartment. Also, that's two swan song like cross references in the game. We have an Alfie and we have a Majid so far. All right, so this thing should let us in now. All citizens in this area has been cordoned off by the Neo SF Police Department. Yeah, 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 I know. But I have permission. One moment, citizen, while I verify Detective Rivers' authorization. Authorization obtained. Thank you. Alright, so... I caution you to restrict your observations to the visual, though, as there has not been an officer in to check the scene personally. Alright, let's go. Let's do it. Let's get in there. So, whoa. Whoa. Shit got real. Uh, wh what? Oh, no. No, no, no! Our apartment! What did they do to my home? Who could have done this? Jeez, that graffiti looks like human revolution stuff. Why would they come after us, though? Why would they break our things? I... I don't know what to do, Skinny. This place, these items, they're all I have of Hayden. What if he's gone for good? What will I do if I can't find him? Don't worry, Turin. We'll find him. You're... You're right. I apologize for the emotional outburst. Let's look around and see if we can find the data cache in all this mess. Oh. Hmm. We don't have time to waste on my histrionics. Does histrionics have the same etymological root as hysterical? Alright, let's take a look around. Humanity has changed rapidly in the last century. 
hybridization of the human genome and a wide variety of cybernetic augmentations has, in the human revolution's viewpoint, diluted the purity and strength of the species. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh... Oh, it doesn't. Well, there you go. Yeah, they have... Hysterionics is one thing, but hysterical is another. I was gonna ask because I try not to use the term hysterical because it's... I mean, as language goes, it's kind of, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of sexist, so I don't use it, but histrionics, thank you, Cross Staves, has just explained, uh, comes from, uh, previously meaning theatrical. Um, there you go. Cool. <laughs> thank you. I figured, I expected that the game wouldn't use that kind of language, and I'm, I'm very impressed that, that they thought about it and chose something, uh, better. I think you're right about this being human revolution propaganda, but I don't know why they'd come after Hayden. I know they don't like Parallax, because they think advanced technology in general is bad, but they spend most of their time going after hybrids and cyborgs. That's why they're protesting at Genus now. I'll run some deep mesh net searches and see if anything turns up. So something that I think is interesting is that this game is doing um, a similar but different thing to... Okay, you remember, if you watched when I was playing The Witcher, we talked about how often fantasy games step in and use fantasy racism instead of real racism. So they just pretend like real racism is not really a thing. So they're like, yeah, but people are racist against elves and dwarves, so we're, we're like exploring racist themes. Which kind of, yeah, but not really. It's sort of a cop-out. Um, what I'm finding interesting about this is that there's still that that layer of human uh, like bigotry essentially against each other and it's not a stand-in for something else you know it's not like X-Men where it's like being a mutant is a stand-in for being gay it's like there are characters in this who are gay and bi and trans and agender and whatever like the broad spectrum is represented but the struggle is about other kinds of, of uh, negative human interaction without ignoring, bypassing, or writing over. Like, that stuff's not being steamrolled. It's just a part of the game. So, you know, you could see a fantasy game doing the same thing where, yes, people are, like, in racial conflict between humans, elves, and dwarves, but there's also sexism and racism present in the game's fiction. Um, or it's not, right? So it's like an ideological conflict um, on top of a world that has already sort of moved, it seems like, moved mostly past uh, its um, uh, sexuality and gender conflict in a lot of ways. Um, at least from what we've seen. So that's that's interesting. It's cool that there's there's layers, and I don't think I've really ever seen a game both acknowledge current existing issues without also dumping in like a stand-in for it to be like, you know, like all those old heavy-handed episodes of Star Trek where it's like, I'm from the side of the planet where we have black on the left of our face. Well, I'm from the side that we have black on the right of our face. We hate each other. Racism. All right, so Texcom, graffiti. The desk says it's empty, but I don't trust computers. Let's look. Ransacked and tagged with spray paint. All right, fine. It was actually empty. Oh no, the plant! Oh. Someone took time to methodically shred the poor plant. That plant was not pure enough. A ROM piece has it been embedded in the high-res screen. Oh yeah, it sure has. Uh, can we go outside? The view is marred by graffiti and splintered glass. I think the data cache is gone, Skinny. We've searched everywhere and it just isn't here. I hate to return to Tomcat empty-handed, but this leaves us twisting in the wind. Perhaps they can point us in a new direction. The data cache is no longer our objective. Hmm. Maybe they took it for corporate espionage. Maybe this is all... Maybe it's all a smoke screen. That's a distinct possibility, Skinny. I just don't have enough personal experience with the human revolution to give you an honest answer. The information on the mesh net is extremely conflicting and desperately polarized. Some of it paints them as neo-druid nature lovers. Well, obviously not. They killed that plant. Other parts as bigoted Luddites stuck in the past. Perhaps we could... Oh, dear. What's happening? Oh, shit. Chapter 2. Interface design on those numbers? Super hot.
What happened to me? Did my liver fail? <laughs> Skinny, thank goodness you're finally awake. I've spent the past 30 minutes calculating the odds of you being indefinitely incapacitated or immobilized. I'm relieved to find my pessimism was misplaced and you appear to be okay. Ah, my head's killing me. What happened? Someone ambushed us at the apartment. After you collapsed, my power systems were jammed. It took me 10 minutes to reboot and call an ambulance. The doctors were originally worried you may have suffered a concussion, but thankfully that isn't the case. What's strange is there isn't any evidence of impact trauma to your head at all. My best calculations indicate you were hit with some kind of neurological scrambler. They are serious military hardware and difficult to obtain, but that type of non-lethal electrical field would interrupt my systems as well. A mil-spec neuroscrambler fits the bill. Why did they have to attack you? Uh, why did they attack us and just leave? If we walked in on them while they were searching the apartment for Hayden's files, I can understand them stunning us to make their escape. But the probability that they're actually after me, or rather the research behind my creation, is high. Leaving me when I was vulnerable makes no sense. Rational Pie, thanks for the re-up. Welcome back. Who do you think did this? Sorry, I was getting distracted by the, the music. Perhaps a big multinational corporation, or even an actual government. I now believe my original hypothesis to have been correct. Hayden must have been kidnapped by a powerful organization looking to get control of his research. Trashing our apartment was probably a cover for the theft of the data cache we were looking for. Maybe they want to use you to lead them to the rest of Hayden's research. A reasonable deduction, Skinny. We'll have to be careful from here on out, so as to prevent our stalkers from snatching our prize from us. If they don't yet have Hayden's research, we may still have time to rescue him before something really bad happens to him. Ugh. Did you see who hit us? No, I didn't. They hit us from behind and nothing showed up on my optics before I was disrupted. They either had cloaking of some kind or were very careful making their way into the apartment. My optics, while not top of the line, are better than an off-the-shelf ROMs. I should have been able to detect any thermal changes from someone being there. Did they just sneak in the front door while we were there rummaging? When my RAM got scrambled, I lost a few seconds of memory I hadn't yet written to my data drive. Anyway, the nurses told me that they want you to stay overnight for observation, Skinny. A sound precaution to be sure, but if we were hit with a neuroscrambler, not a blunt object, it's a waste of time. I won't presume to make medical decisions for you, but perhaps we should pressure them to release you today. It's just... Hayden's trail is getting cold. Oh, before I forget, here are your belongings. The nurses had me hold on to them for you until you awoke. Here's your ID card. Don't lose this again. Here are those headphones you reviewed. Where is it? I noticed the article on your computer before. Good job getting published. Yes, but where's my damn milk? Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you. It's gonna be really mad if you took that from me. Luckily, the hospital staff didn't find you carrying a carton of spoiled milk around to be cause for concern. And finally, here's your commemorative glass of water you got from Alfie. Looks like it got broken. Now all we have is this broken commemorative glass. The saddest statement ever made. Also, your bag got wet. <sighs> Maybe we should just throw it away. You're right, you wouldn't want to cut yourself. Oh, Meat Shield 81. Welcome to the math squad. I could have used that broken glass as a weapon. Oh, who's this? I can't do a voice of a person I don't know about. Have I overheard your friend has gone missing? All right, let's do what? Turn, turn your damn head. Open curtains. Oh yeah, it's Fairlight. Seems he's your roommate. Ah, better now. Huh. Once again, I'm sorry for being nosy, but you're perhaps speaking of Hayden Weber? Yeah, he's an old friend of mine. I'd be most concerned if it indeed were he who you're discussing. Wait, who are you? <laughs> ah, of course. I have not yet introduced myself. You're quite right to be wary, assuming the seriousness of the situation. 
I'm Dr. Yannick Fairlight, founder and former CEO of System One Software. Fairlight named after the Fairlight Excalibur, which I believe is a cyber deck in Shadowrun. Though that might also be a reference to something else. I met Hayden during the course of the merger between Parallax and my company. He's telling the truth, at least as far as I can intuit from information on the mesh net. And I do recall Hayden mentioning a Dr. Fairlight at least once in passing at some point. <laughs> I see. Confirmation of my identity. Were you listening at our conversation? <sighs> yes, I apologize for that. It... Yeah, it's probably a Neuromancer. Right, the Fairlight Excalibur is a reference to Neuromancer, and then this Fairlight is either a reference to that or the other one. Oh, there we go. Fairlight is a reference to the synthesizer. Everything is named after the same thing. <laughs> I apologize for that. It isn't difficult to overhear bits of every conversation in this room on a noisy day. I may not regret it, however, if the situation indeed concerns us both. Perhaps we can help each other out. I won't press you for information, but perhaps I can be of assistance? I remember my association with Hayden fondly, and I would be happy to help in any way I can. I have nothing better to do, regardless. Wait, what are you doing here? It's quite a coincidence we find ourselves here, sharing a room, but such things happen from time to time. It's not so mysterious. It's up to us to seize opportunity when it appears. I'm getting a bit on in years, and this chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support ROM. Its development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medication as necessary to keep my body stable. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at least would have been severely bedridden. So, uh, here's another uh, another really cool uh, another NPC. You know, we're seeing diversity of uh, of character, gender, of sexuality, and now we're seeing diversity of um, uh, body type. Right? This this character is confined to essentially a wheelchair. Um, and is presented as like a major character in the game, which is pretty cool. Compare and contrast, uh, if, if you will, the presentation of uh, this character as we play through the game with the um, scene from uh, Life is Strange that we saw uh, a, few, uh, a few episodes back. It requires frequent maintenance, and I'm here at the hospital to have it serviced. Unfortunately, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once, and my appointment's been pushed back. The hospital administrators were concerned about me, thus they placed me here in a room with quiet patient so I could continue my work while waiting. I do not think they expected you to awaken quite as quickly as you did. I like that uh, Turing is sitting on the end of the bed. That, that's really neat. How did you meet Hayden? Hayden and I made our acquaintance when Parallax and my company underwent a merger. At the time, Hayden was merely a young, hotshot researcher working at the Student Data Correlation Center. He was assigned to find the best ways to integrate Parallax's own connection and analysis tools into System 1's operating system. And he was a bit much to handle at times, honestly, but I admired his passion for the subject. You said former CEO. Ha! Huh. <laughs> yes, uh, former. I accepted a lower position after the merger with Parallax, though that too didn't last. The new board of directors and I had a difference of opinion about the direction the new company should take. The distributed mesh net that current generation ROMs use was, at the time, a highly experimental, and I, I felt that a non-centralized data scheme was dangerous, both from internal and external threats. I've been proven wrong so far, but the security work that goes into maintaining the integrity of the mesh net is incredibly expensive. And there were other disagreements, but in the end I was voted off the board of directors and exited from the company. To be dishonest to say there are no hard feelings, but I'm still a very wealthy man. And then I found other projects to occupy my time. Do you know anything about Hayden's research? His... his research? No. Not so much. I remember the time he had interest in advanced machine sapiens, so that's the realm of science fiction. He once showed me a prototype of his. She was quite clever and very convincing, but you could tell she didn't contain the spark of life. I assume you were another of his creations? Yes, I am. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. My name is Turing, and they are skinny. Uh, did you say she? Ah, yes. She was quite insistent on the fact of the course of my conversation with her. Hayden said she'd picked out the color for a casing herself. Pastel pink. 
Still, I must assume you're far more advanced than she if you're spearheading the research for your or the search for your creator. Perhaps I should have had more faith in Hayden's little hobby. Do you know what became of her? Or where she might be now? Hayden has told me so little of his past research. I'm sorry, Turing. It was a long time ago, and I'm afraid my memory is not what it used to be. If I ever knew any more about her, I've forgotten. Although, I still have some connections within Parallax. Should I stumble over any information about your erstwhile sibling, I'll pass it your way. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Ha! <laughs> of course. Ask away. How can you help? Well, I can think of a few ways. I still have some contacts in Parallax and can put out some quiet feelers. Maybe they'll know something. Other than that, I'm not sure what I can do, but I'm wealthy and bored, so I'm sure I'll come up with something. <laughs> Perhaps you'll tell me about your investigation. What did you find at Hayden's apartment? The first time we went, nothing. When we went back to gather up his computer's data cache, the place had been pillaged, and the human revolution had spray-painted slogans all over the walls. Hayden's computer was gone, and we were assaulted. We're still frustratingly in the dark and running out of time. I fear Hayden is slipping out of reach. I am failing him. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. What do you want? What do I want? I wish to be young again and off exploring uncharted ruins. <laughs> but right now, with you two, I simply wish to help. I have the resource, and it sounds like our mutual friend is in trouble. It's been very interesting speaking with you, Dr. Fairlight. Right, Skinny? Turing, are you sure we can trust him? I don't think we have any choice, Skinny. Ha. <laughs> I understand your reluctance to involve me. I do hope I can earn your trust. Ah, I think I may have a lead for you to follow up on, just off the top of my head. You said you found Human Revolution slogans spray-painted on the wall? I'm acquaintance with the man leading the current Human Revolution protest at the Genus Clinic. His name is Brian Mulberry. After an introduction from me, he may be willing to shine some light on that particular event. If it was just some hot-headed youth from the organization, it should be an easy cleanup. If not, it's useful information in itself. Are you, you're involved with the human revolution? Ah, uh, no, no, not not as such. While Mr. Mulberry and I were associated with each other once, it was before he joined the human revolution. I find their methodology too aggressive and their stated goals dangerously backward. While I push for careful deployment of technology after the parallax system one merger, I am no Luddite. After all, I'd likely be dead without the advanced medical and computing technology that goes into this chair. Thank you for helping us out like this. I'll send a message downstairs to my assistant, Leon Decker. Cute. <laughs> Leon Decker. Leon from Leon the Replicant, and Decker, ostensibly from Deckard, from also Blade Runner. He's distinctive. I don't think you'll have any problems finding him. He'll present you with one of my cards to prove your association with me to Mr. Mulberry. Make sure you speak with him before you leave. In the meantime, I'll get in touch with some other individuals I know and try to find out any other information about Hayden I might be able to pass on to you. How do you know this Brian Mulberry? Well, when I exited Parallax after the merger, I sought out like-minded individuals to put pressure on the company to avoid full deployment to the MeshNet system. Brian Mulberry was one such person. We did not succeed in our effort, but a high-profile breach of Parallax servers did force them to put vastly larger efforts into network security than they had planned. A great expenditure of resources I had been hoping to avoid. Well, we should get going, Turing. Ah, of course. Please, don't let me delay you any further. Good luck, Turing, and I, I don't think Hayden's faith in you is misplaced. You're an impressive piece of technology. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. We'll be in touch. Should I call downstairs and have you discharged, Skinny? else I can interact with here? Now let's go. Wake up, tame today. You are one lucky dog, Skinny. Didn't I tell you to be careful? Do you get it now? I can't be around to pull your ass out of the fire all the time anymore. And don't even, I don't even know how I would have handled the Board of Inquiry and your sister if you'd actually been hurt. I'm sorry, Detective Rivers. Our assailant got the drop on us due to my negligence and lack of technical prowess. This is all because of my failure, not Skinny's. Blame me, not them. 
It's my fault, not theirs. Yeah, because the robot, fresh off the assembly line, is going to know how to handle this kind of thing better than the supposedly hard-boiled journalist you're carting around. Well, actually, Detective Rivers, I think I'll tell you the whole truth, since Skinny trusts you. Keep it under your hat, though. Metaphorically. I'm actually a prototype designed to be the first fully sapient machine. I suspect my creation is the main reason for Hayden's disappearance, beyond his normal research for Parallax. My name is Turing. That's a damn bigger problem than you first let on, huh? The first machine sapient. People are gonna have things to say about that. I hope that this game has a character with a beard so that I can cosplay as them. You sure know how to get yourself dropped in the drink, Skinny. Just get it together, both of you. I really care about you, but it sounds like you're stumbling into a really dangerous situation. Also, I'm... I'm starting to think you were right. Someone higher up in the department is trying to delay the investigation into Hayden's disappearance. I filled out the full report and was then informed in no uncertain terms. I was to wait the entire 48 hours before opening an official case. And that's after the break-in and vandalization of the apartment was reported. It's not being squashed completely, so I don't think anyone's been bought, but... Somebody definitely has to have some influence, and have to buy themselves time by forcing me to follow protocol to a T. Nah, not that I will, but I'm gonna have to keep things quiet. So stop messing around, Skinny. There's certainly a story here, but if you keep bumbling around, you're gonna blow it. Just be careful, okay? I've got a bad feeling about this. I'd really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that's not gonna happen at this point. I just have a hunch that people are gonna end up dead over this, and I don't want you to be one of them. And I really don't want to be the one making that call to your sister. Please. I'm sorry, Lexi. I'll be careful. I promise. Yeah, yeah. I know. Just here. Aw, oh, zapper! Take this and use it if you have to. Is this the same thing we got hit with? It's not. This is a medium range electro laser pistol. It uses a low power laser, laser to create a channel of ionized gas to complete a circuit between gun and the target, then discharges a considerable amount of current into the air. Think of it as a wireless taser of the older variety. The neural scrambler we were attacked with uses a powerful electromagnetic field to disrupt electrical signals in the target's nervous system. It's far more dangerous and prone to be permanently damaging to the target. You got lucky. This is a more suitable personal defense weapon and it's legal to carry a Neo SF without a license. Thanks. I hope I won't need it. Me too, Skinny. I'll be in touch if I find anything out, but don't hold your breath. I have a feeling my superiors are gonna keep leaning on me to do nothing. Back to the grind, I guess. See you. Stay safe. You'd best talk to the reception rooms at the desk and officially check out before we go anywhere. We should also check out... Excuse me. <laughs> we should also check out... Look at, for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Mr. Decker. He should be around here somewhere. A cute little cleaner rum. Scrubbing the floors. Alright. Um, you know what? This is a good place. We, we've got we've got our, our, our next step out. Um, so before we move on... Ooh, hey, a NURPS, uh, a NURPS machine. Before we move on to the next part of the game, uh, I want to take a break.